Welcome, my name is Janine and in this video we will learn about asterisms. Asterisms are not true constellations, but rather a pattern or group of stars that can be part of a constellation or a collection of constellations. Sometimes asterisms can be simple shapes of just a few stars, and other times they are collections of many bright stars. They are useful for people who are trying to familiarize themselves with the night sky. So before we begin, let's just notice the seasonal symbols that I will use throughout this video. And these symbols will just remind you when these asterisms can be seen throughout the year in the Northern Hemisphere. The first star pattern we will look at is one of the most recognized patterns in the sky, and it's known as the Big Dipper. And maybe you've seen this star pattern out there before, but in reality, the Big Dipper is part of a larger constellation known as Ursa Major. And the Big Dipper is really well known in many cultures, and it has a lot of names, such as the Plow, the Great Wagon, the list really goes on and on. But the Big Dipper is a part of Ursa Major. Major, and it's one that we can see all year round in every season in the Northern Hemisphere. The constellations that are nearby are Ursa Minor and Draco, and in fact we can use the Big Dipper to help us find Ursa Minor. This right here is the Big Dipper, which is part of Ursa Major, and you use the two pointer stars right here to guide you to Polaris. And the Big Dipper can point you to many other constellations, not just the North Star. Here in this diagram you can see you can use the pointer stars to guide you past Polaris to find Pegasus. You can use other stars to point you to Leo. Um, I often use it to Arc to Arcturus and then speed to Spica. So here you can just see the Big Dipper is a really important asterism because it guides you to so many other stars in the sky. The next asterism we'll learn is one we've already mentioned, the Little Dipper. And the Little Dipper looks like this. Its shape is slightly different than the Big Dipper. Its handle is convex instead of concave, and the stars aren't do not have equal brightness like the Big Dipper does. But the Little Dipper is really classified as Ursa Minor, and this is another constellation in which you can see all year round. It's classified as a circumpolar constellation, and it's located next to Ursa Major, and Draco, the tail of Draco, goes in between the Little and Big Dipper. That's how I find Draco. And this constellation is important because it contains Polaris, the North Star, and that's the star that doesn't appear to move in the sky because it's oriented over the next, the, the North Celestial Pole. Next, we have the W of Cassiopeia. So if you're looking at the bright stars in this photograph, can you make that W shape of all the bright stars? This, in fact, is the entire constellation of Cassiopeia, or the star pattern within the boundary of Cassiopeia. And this is another important asterism to know because it can help you point to many other constellations in the sky. So here we have another picture of Cassiopeia. Can you find that W shape towards the upper left hand side? And if you can, this is what we're looking at. If you have Cassiopeia right here, you can use that center star to guide you right towards Polaris. And here's the Little Dipper or Ursa Minor. And then right here is Cepheus. That's another circumpolar constellation as well. I want to take a quick look at this picture because it has a lot of the constellations or asterisms we just discussed. So can you find the Big Dipper towards the left hand side of the photograph? From there, try using the pointer stars to point you to Polaris. Polaris is pretty much at the center of this photograph. And from there, can you find the Little Dipper? So here is Ursa Major, or rather the Big Dipper, and the entire Ursa Major constellation does not fit in this photograph. It's the fourth largest constellation in the sky, but you can use the pointer stars to guide you to Polaris. And then here is the Little Dipper, or Ursa Minor, okay? And over here, you have Cassiopeia, okay? So if we are gonna point these out, there you have it. You can use Cassiopeia Center Star to guide you towards Polaris as well. 
And just to point out some of the other constellations we have right here, we have Cepheus, and then this is um, part of Draco. Draco is a very large constellation. It's difficult to get a full photograph of it. But these are the three very important asterisms for you to know because it can help you guide it can guide you to many other constellations in the sky next we will take a look at the asterisms that can be seen during the winter season in the northern hemisphere one very familiar star pattern seen in the winter sky is called Orion's Belt or the Belt Stars, and this is part of a larger constellation known as Orion, another very recognizable star pattern in the sky. This is an important asterism because it can be used to point out other constellations in the sky, including Taurus right here and Canis Major. So here is Orion. We have the belt stars right here, and it can guide you right towards Canis Major. And this really bright star is called Sirius, and it's the brightest star in the night sky. The Winter Triangle is another useful asterism that connects three constellations in the winter sky. In this photo, can you make out the triangle shape using three bright stars in the photo? Here is what the shape of the Winter Triangle looks like, and it connects three constellations. We have Orion, we have Canis Major, which only a portion of it is being seen in this photograph, and then we have Canis Minor, this little two-star constellation. Here are the names of the stars that connect to make the Winter Triangle. We have Betelgeuse, which is part of Orion. Sometimes this is pronounced Betelgeuse. And Sirius right here. This is the brightest star in the night sky. And then we have Procyon, sometimes pronounced Procyon. The Winter Hexagon is another asterism seen in the winter months, and it is a very large asterism that connects the brightest stars of six different constellations. In my own experience, it can be a challenge to point out this asterism simply because it is so large in the sky. So the stars that it connects includes Pollux from Gemini, we have Capella in Auriga, Aldebaran in Taurus, Rigel in Orion, Sirius in Canis Major, and Procyon in Canis Minor. If we were to point out those constellations, that's the general area of where they're located. We have Gemini, Auriga, Taurus, easily recognizable Orion, only a portion of Canis Major is seen here, and then the two-star Canis Minor. Also notice that the Winter Triangle is also kind of within the Winter Hexagon itself. So the Winter Triangle, I feel, is slightly easier to point out because it's just a smaller portion of the sky. Now let's look at some asterisms that can be seen in the spring sky. The first is the spring triangle, and this pattern is made up of the brightest stars in three different constellations. There is the star Arcturus in the constellation Botes, there's the star Spica in Virgo, and then there's also Regulus in Leo. Now there's some different pronunciations of this star, I've heard Regulus or Regulus, but I've also seen pictures connecting Denebola which is the tail star of the lion and connecting Spica and Arcturus. I've also seen another version um, of the spring sky called the spring diamond, and this connects Arcturus, Spica, Denebola, and Car Caroli. That's a bright star in Canis Venetici. So let's get some practice on what this looks like. So this is a very large sky view, and it could look a little confusing just because there's so much here. But the first thing you want to do is find the Big Dipper towards the right-hand side of the screen. And from there, you can arc to Arcturus. So here's the Big Dipper, just to point it out. You arc to Arcturus, and then you speed to Spica. So these are two of the stars in the Spring Triangle. And then if you draw a line straight here, this here is one version of the Spring Triangle. Um, the other version, you can't really see Regulus, the other bright star, but um, I often connect these dots. It makes a nice little isosceles triangle. And then the Spring Diamond, we can point that out as well. So here are the constellations, just to point them out for everybody. We have Ursa Major, Ursa Minor, Botes, Corona Borealis. This big one is Virgo. We have Canis Venetici, 
Homa Berenices and Leo the Lion. So if we were to point out the spring triangle, that's one version, and then that's where the spring diamond would be. So use these um, different pictures to just kind of help you familiarize yourself, not only with the asterisms that can be seen, but also with the constellations. Our next asterism is called the sickle, and it resembles that tool that we often use in agriculture to cut things down. So this asterism is located in the constellation of Leo. This is one version of what Leo looks like in terms of its star pattern. Remember that constellations often um, can vary depending upon source, but the nearby constellations are Cancer and Virgo. And it's really easy to point out Leo because of this asterism. Sometimes I also tell my students that it looks like a backwards question mark as well. So that's another way to help you remember this asterism. The next asterism that we can see in the spring sky is called the kite. And here's a picture of what it looks like. The kite is actually a part of the constellation known as Botes. And as I said earlier, it can be seen in the spring sky. The constellations that are nearby are Ursa Major, and right next to it we have Corona Borealis. The easiest way to find this constellation is to use Ursa Major. You use the handle of the Big Dipper to arc to Arcturus, which is the brightest star in this constellation. Our next asterism is called the Keystone, and it's also located in the spring sky. In this photograph that you're seeing, there are multiple constellations, but the Keystone is right towards the center of this photograph, and it connects these four stars. The Keystone is really a part of the constellation Hercules, and the nearby constellations are Lyra and Corona Borealis. Lyra isn't pictured in this photo, but Corona Borealis is, and I use those two constellations to help me find not only the Keystone, but Hercules as well. Sometimes the Keystone morphs into the butterfly asterism, and that is also a part of Hercules. So you can use these strategies, these two different star patterns, to help you find this very large constellation in the spring sky. We now move to the Northern Crown, which we've mentioned a few times in this video already, which is called Corona Borealis. It's this C-shaped pattern that we can see in the sky, and the name itself means Corona Borealis. Corona meaning crown, Borealis meaning north. Here's another picture of the Northern Crown. Can you see that C shape on its side? This is what the Northern Crown looks like. So you can use this star pattern, or this is just really an alternate name for the Northern Crown, but it is the constellation known as Corona Borealis. And the constellations that are nearby are Hercules, as we saw in the previous photograph, and Botes. So if you can arc to Arcturus, finding Botes, Corona Borealis is right next door. Another spring asterism that can be seen in the Northern Hemisphere is the Southern Cross. However, it's difficult to see this if you live in the upper latitudes of the Northern Hemisphere. When I'm visiting Pennsylvania, which is where I grew up, I was never able to find this constellation. I was just too far north, but when I'm in Hawaii, I'm able to identify it because I'm closer to the equator. So the Southern Cross is that cross-like pattern that you can see towards the right of the photo photograph and if we point it out this is what it looks like and this has honestly been a really recent discovery um, for me for years of living in Hawaii I noticed it but didn't realize its significance um, the Southern Cross is really important in helping you find uh, the southern the South Celestial Pole but it can also help you find Alpha Centauri system which is the closest star system to us so here Let's just point out, it is part of a constellation known as Crux, but it's very commonly called the Southern Cross. And I recognize that if you live in the Southern Hemisphere, you're going to see this at a different time of year than when you would in the Northern Hemisphere. But I often don't comment about what you can see in the Southern Hemisphere because I've never lived there. I'm only ever gonna teach as to what you can see 
from the Northern Hemisphere perspective. So, there are some nearby constellations. Centaurus is one of them. So here's the Southern Cross, and then if you kind of draw a straight line, you should notice these two bright stars, which are part of the Centaurus constellation. And this star right here is Alpha Centauri, and that's a triple star system. It also has Proxima Centauri as one of those stars of the triple system. So I was really just so happy to find this constellation. And then I immediately noticed these two bright stars next to it. And I was like, oh, that's where Alpha Centauri is. So it's amazing that I've been viewing the sky for so many years and only recently found this. Uh, so I wanted to just give you some some information about how you can use the Southern Cross to help you find the South Celestial Pole. So if you draw, here's the Southern Cross and you draw a line downwards and then here are the Southern Pointers. Those are the two stars I pointed out in the previous photograph. If you draw lines from them, it, le it lands really closely to the South Celestial Pole. So this is a great asterism if you're able to see it in the Northern Hemisphere to help you find the South Celestial Pole. In the next section of this video, we'll review over the summer asterisms. So we'll first start with the summer triangle. So as you're looking at this photograph, can you find the three brightest stars and then connect the dots to make a triangle? If so, this is what the summer triangle looks like. And these three stars are part of three different constellations. We have Lyra right here, we have Cygnus making a giant cross in the sky, and then only a part of Aquila is really shown in this photograph. But I like this photo because the summer triangle really stands out. The names of these stars, we have Vega, that's in Lyra, we have Deneb, which is in the tail of the swan, and Altair, which is in Aquila the eagle. Let's take another view of the summer triangle. This is probably more like what your sky would look like if you have a little bit of light pollution or this is even a good dark sky photo. So here the summer triangle really stands out. This is what it looks like. We have Vega up top, Deneb to the left, and Altair down to the right. If you wanted to point out what those constellations look like, there's a picture of the dots being connected. However, Aquila, we don't see the entire constellation. Our next asterism that we can see in the summer sky is one we've just recently talked about, and it's called the Northern Cross. And the Northern Cross is a part of the constellation of Cygnus, and it really just makes up the brightest stars of the Swan constellation. So the nearby constellations that we just learned from the Summer Triangle are Lyra and Aquila. This star pattern is pretty easy to point out, even if it's in skies with a decent amount of light pollution, because the stars are of relatively equal magnitude. Our next summer asterism is called the fish hook in some parts of the world. And if we were to point it out, this is what it looks like in the sky. And you can see why it is called the fish hook because it certainly looks like one. And the fish hook is really a part of the constellation known as Scorpius. There are some other constellations nearby, such as Sagittarius right here. But this fish hook is very, it's a very large pattern in the sky, and it's definitely one of my favorites to point out just because it has a lot of different celestial objects within its boundaries. So depending on where you are in the Northern Hemisphere, this, this asterism may be easy for you to see, or it might be a little difficult if you're farther away from the equator. Next, we have the teapot, and the teapot is a small portion of the constellation known as Sagittarius. And this one is really easy to point out in the summer sky if you know where to look. If you're lucky enough to be viewing the stars in a dark sky area, you have the Milky Way right here. And Sagittarius, or the teapot, asterism is really close to the brightest areas of the Milky Way galaxy. So you can use the teapot to help you find where Sagittarius is and also where Scorpius is as well. 
Next, we'll review the autumn asterisms, and we'll start with the Great Square of Pegasus. Out of all the star patterns that are easily visible in the autumn sky, Pegasus really stands out because of its easy pattern and its very, very large size in the sky. So if we were to point out the Great Square here, this is this asterism with the four bright stars of Pegasus connected. And then here are the other parts of the constellation. And Pegasus is a great way to find many other constellations in the sky. I use it to help me find Pisces, to help me find Delphinus, as well as Andromeda, which can be seen in this photograph. And that's no surprise because Pegasus is such a large constellation that one, it's hard to photograph um, in its entirety and to capture other objects in there as well. So the Great Square of Pegasus is a great star pattern to help you find other patterns in the sky. Our next autumn asterism is called the circlet and it's part of the constellation of Pisces. So as you're looking at this photograph, there's a few constellations here. We have the great square of Pegasus, we have Aries and we have Pisces and a part of Andromeda as well. So first you want to find that great square of Pegasus. It should be pretty easy as it's kind of towards the center of the photograph. And then right underneath there is a small little circle of stars and that is the circlet which makes up Pisces. So if we were to point this out, we have the great square asterism right here and then the circlet is right down here. And that's part of the head of Pisces. Here we have where the this is one head of the fish, this is the other head of the fish, and then it's connected right here. So Pisces can be a difficult constellation to find because many of its stars are fairly dim. But the way that I try to find it is first finding the great square and then looking for the circlet that's really nearby. We also have a portion of Aries right here and then Andromeda comes off the great square right here. Our final asterism we'll take a look at is called Job's Coffin, and this is a part of the constellation known as Delphinus. I couldn't really understand or find information about how this asterism got its name, but it really makes this little diamond shape in the sky and the entire constellation of Delphinus looks like this, and it's really tiny but very easy to point out. It's kind of sandwiched in between Aquila and Pegasus, so those are the constellations that are nearby. But like I said, I couldn't really find the origin of how this asterism got its name. But those are all the constellations that we have, so thank you so much for watching. I hope this video was helpful in order for you to understand that there are many different star patterns that are out there that aren't technically true constellations, but we can use them as a guide to help us find many other constellations.